Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The topic of today's lecture is the acquired disorders of epidermal keratinization. I will be giving this lecture in two parts. So today is the part one, and next week I will be delivering part two. So in part one, we are going to discuss a few diseases which will be categorized under, under the general heading of acquired disorders of epidermal keratinization. So the first is acquired ichthyosis. Acquired ichthyosis arises in adulthood, but is clinically and histopathologically similar to the hereditary ichthyosis vulgaris. So it is called as acquired because it is not genetic, it is not present since birth, and it is acquired in childhood or adulthood. It should raise the suspicion of associated internal disease particularly a malignancy or an endocrinopathy or some chronic infection or at autoimmunity or some reaction to medication. So these are the common causes of acquired ichthyosis. So this slide uh, gives a little more detailed uh, view of the causes that are associated with acquired ichthyosis or these are the conditions in which the skin uh, gets dry. So there are a long list of neoplasias like Hodgkin's disease, mycosis fungoides, multiple myeloma, Kaposi's sarcoma, and carcinomas of lung, breast, ovary, and cervix. There are certain medications prominent of which are statins, then nicotinic acid, cimetidine, and clofazamine. So these drugs are also associated with uh, a dry skin. Then several endocrinopathies like diabetes, like thyroid diseases, hyperparathyroidism and hypopituitarism also result in a dry skin. Lepromatous leprosy is known cause of acquired ichthyosis. In addition to that, the disseminated tuberculosis, HIV, and human T cell lymphotropic virus one associated myelopathy. Autoimmune conditions, the dermato dermatomyositis, systemic lupus erythematosus, scleroderma, and lupus overlap syndrome are all associated with a dry skin. Then chronic metabolic derangements, including malnutrition, malabsorption syndromes, essential fatty acid deficiency, and pancreatic insufficiency will also result in acquired ichthyosis. Anorexia nervosa is another cause, and among the miscellaneous disorders, this is sarcoidosis, bone marrow transplantation, and chronic renal failure. Pathophysiology. In cases associated with diabetes, it is due to structural abnormalities in proteins that resulting from non-enzymatic glycosylation. The same hypothesis also apply to ichthyosis that is associated with other autoimmune disorders. Cases that are associated with tumors seem to be due to secretion of neoplastic cells of transforming growth factor alpha, which exerts a mitogenic effect on keratinocytes and results in ichthyosis. Pathology. The histologically epidermis shows compact hyperkeratosis, thin and absent granular layer, and moderate degree of acanthosis. Environmental factors. Generally, the acquired ichthyosis is more in hot and humid climate, in atopic individuals in very humid atmosphere. In their home country, xerosis is not, uh, but in Europe, the low humidity may precipitate ichthyotic changes in immigrants. Then clinical features. The onset of acquired ichthyosis is typically sudden with initial involvement of lower limb, but it may be generalized. So mainly the lower limb is involved in acquired ichthyosis, but can occur, become generalized. Symmetrical dry thick scaling appears on the legs. Arm and trunk can be involved, especially the back, but flexures are usually spared. Flexures are also spared in ichthyosis vulgaris. Face is unaffected in most cases but scalp may show abundant fine scales. Pruritus can be pronounced. 
there may be palmoplantar hyperkeratosis with fissuring. Differential diagnosis of acquired ichthyosis include the xeroderma, uh, esteotortic eczema, atopic dermatitis, drug eruption, and all the hereditary causes of ichthyosis. The disease course and prognosis. Acquired ichthyosis may improve with successful treatment of underlying disease uh, or cessation of the responsible drug. Investigation. For the diagnosis of acquired ichthyosis, Clinical and confirmatory tests are usually unnecessary. Once the diagnosis is established, careful search for an underlying cause should be undertaken. In addition to the full history, clinical examination, chest radiograph, and detailed drug history must be acquired. An appropriate investigation should be performed to identify the other causes that are resulting in this acquired ichthyosis. As far as the management is concerned, the first and the foremost important task is to treat the underlying cause of the disorder. And for the local treatment, the first line is topical retinoids, particularly tretinoin and tezerotene, that reduces the cohesiveness of keratinocytes and will result in reduction in thickness and dryness of the skin. Second line treatment include beta hydroxy acid, that is salicylic acid in variable concentration from two to 5%, which will help again in disaggregating the corneocytes. Third line treatment include alpha hydroxy acid that are lactic acid or glycolic acid. They produce loosening and de of corneocytes if applied twice daily. Urea in 10 to 20% is also an excellent hum humectant. Propylene glycol as 20% preparation in aqueous cream also uh, is effective in loosening the corneocyte band and resulting in decrease in overall dryness of the skin. Then the, another disease that needs uh, to be um, discussed and remembered is acanthosis nigricans. Acanthosis nigricans manifests as asymptomatic and symmetrical darkening of the skin of intertiginous areas, particularly the axilla, groin, submembrary fold, and the neck. Skin is having a velvety, vel velvety texture and may be studied by skin tags. This is particularly associated with obesity and insulin resistance. Acanthosis nigricans may present, present as isolated skin condition, but may be associated with large range of conditions that range from obesity to endocrinopathies to internal neoplasms. So these are several images of acanthosis nigricans, the axilla, the back of the neck, and the skin is generally dark and velvety with number of skin tags. Epidemiology, benign acanthosis nigricans is very common and affect 20% of adults and 7% of the children and increases threefold if only uh, weight is increased. The chances of occurring uh, acanthosis nigricans increases threefold with or increase in weight. Malignant acanthosis nigricans is a rare entity and occur in older age group. Acanthosis nigricans has equal sex thresholds and more common in patients with darker skin. Among the associated disease, obesity is the most common association. And it, is previously, it was previously called as the pseudoacanthosis nigricans, and that can regress with weight reduction. There are many syndromes that are associated with acanthosis nigricans. Malignant acanthosis nigricans is associated with extensive range of internal cancers, and over 90% of them are GI cancers. Malignant acanthosis nigricans may be accompanied by other cutaneous paraneoplastic phenomena, particularly the florid cutaneous papillomatosis on the trunk and extremities that are clinically indistinguishable from the viral warts. 
these are the several syndromes and disorders that are associated with acanthosis and agricans. They include a, a, the, um, certain endocrinopathies like acromegaly and gigantism, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, primary hypogonadism, pseudoacromegaly, diabetes, hair and syndrome, Hashimoto thyroiditis, autoimmune disorders like lupus, erythematosus, systemic sclerosis, and dermatomyositis. Then certain congenital disorders like Elmstrom, Telangiectasias, Bloom syndrome, Lawrence Moon Beadle syndrome, Werner syndrome, Wilson syndrome, leukoid hepatitis, and phenyl ketone urea. The internal malignancies that are associated with acanthosis and agricans, the first and foremost are GI malignancies, and the most common among them is the gastric cancer. Then is the gallbladder and bile duct, pancreatic cancer, and liver cancer. Genitourinary malignancies include malignancies of kidney, bladder, and gynecological tract, prostate, and testicular cancers. Miscellaneous cancers include Hodgkin's, breast cancer, lung, thyroid, and osteogenic sarcoma and Wilms tumor in children. Pathophysiology. The most common association with benign acanthosis and agricans is obesity and insulin resistance. How the insulin drive growth factor one receptors are overexpressed in obese patients with hyperinsulinemia and insulin resistance. Insulin drive growth factor one can stimulate the proliferation of keratinocytes and dermal fibroblasts. Epidermal growth factor receptors and fibroblast growth factor receptors are also implicated. Some drugs may contribute like um, fibroblastic growth factor receptors activation by stem cell transplantation, such as palifermin, and insulin can provoke the development of acanthosis and agricans at the injection sites. In malignant acanthosis and agricans, tumor drive stimulating factors are produced, especially TGF alpha. The level of tumor drive growth factor decreases with tumor debulking that results in regression of the parapilneoplastic phenomena, among which acanthosis and agricans is one. Histology, the uh, acanthosis and agricans shows hyperkeratosis, papillomatosis. Pigmentation is due to hyperkeratosis. There is no increase in melanin pigmentation or melanin production. Pseudohonsis may be formed. A familial form of acanthosis and agricans is inherited as autosomal dominant. The clinical features. Acanthosis and agricans usually start as asymptomatic darkening of the skin of neck, axilla and groins. With time, patches become thicker, not only dark, but become thicker as well and develop skin tags. Pruritus is not common. Acanthosis and agricans may become widespread with delicate, velvety, furrowing of the mucosal surfaces and involvement of eyelid and conjunctive. Associated nail changes include leukonychia and subungual hyperkeratosis. There are certain clinical variants of acanthosis and agricans. The first among them is hair and syndrome, which is, which is a familial syndrome that manifests as hyperandrogenemia, insulin resistance, and acanthosis in agricans. Mainly affect young black girls who develop polycystic ovaries, hirsutism, clitoral hypertrophy, and frequently high level of plasma testosterone level. So manifesting all the signs of hyperandrogenemia. This condition is also called as the type A insulin resistance syndrome. Then type B insulin resistance syndrome is characterized by association of acanthosis nigricans with diabetes and with hyperandrogenism or with autoimmune diseases like SLE, systemic sclerosis, Hashimoto thyroiditis, and Joggenham syndrome. Familial acanthosis nigricans is rare, transmitted as autosomal dominant with variable penetrance, and it can improve with age. Drug-induced acanthosis nigricans associated with hormones, with insulin, with systemic corticosteroids, testosterone, exogenous estrogen, including oral contraceptive. 
one of the most common association is with nicotinic acid dermatosis tend to resolve after discontinuation of the offending agent then generalized acanthosis in nicotinic is very rare and seen only in children extensive investigation failed to show any associated systemic abnormality acral acanthosis nicotinic is not associated with any systemic disease and manifest as velvety thickening or hyperpigmentation of the skin on the dorsa of hand and feet especially knuckles so such patient present as knuckle pigmentation or nipple hyperkeratosis then unilateral or nevoid acanthosis nicotinic is a rare syndrome arises from somatic mutation during embryogenesis present appears in infancy and clinically appears as pigmented uh, plaques solitary or along the line of blashko and resemble an epidermal nevus it is also described on face and scalp chest abdomen back and thigh differential diagnoses include other hyperpigmentation disorder like hemochromatosis pellagra and addison's disease disease course and prognosis benign acanthosis nigricans is just significant cosmetic problem acanthosis nigricans associated with abnormalities and insulin resistance may improve with treatment of underlying cause Acanthosis nigricans associated with obesity may improve with dietary restriction and weight loss. The prognosis of patient with malignant acanthosis nigricans is poor, and average survival is only two years from the diagnosis. Investigation: The adult onset acanthosis nigricans patient should be screened for underlying endocrinopathy or malignancy. A sensitive sensitive test of insulin resistance is serum insulin level. that must be elevated before the onset of diabetes or elevation of glycosylated hemoglobin level the management of acanthosis nigricans is management of underlying condition treatment is aimed at improving the cosmetic appearance of the condition first line is topical retinoids that remove the hyperkeratosis second line include topical alpha hydroxy acid and keratolytic such as salicylic acid may improve the appearance of by reducing hyperkeratosis and third line is extensive cases oral isotretinoin have been used with some success the third disease we are going to discuss today is confluent and reticulate papillomatosis carp confluent and reticulate papillomatosis is a disorder of epidermal keratinization that is characterized by development of hyperkeratotic papules that coalesce into confluent and reticulate pattern on the trunk as the name signifies many has considered it to be a specific form of acanthosis nigricans while carp is predominantly a disease of young people it is thought that abnormal host reaction to melanesia organism or actinomyces myces bacteria the role of metabolic abnormalities associated with obesity and insulin resistance as well as thyroid dysfunction and cushing disease is coming up so uh, the possibility of uh, etiology include the fungal yeast melanesia or actinomyces bacteria or metabolic abnormalities such as obesity insulin resistance thyroid dysfunction and cushing disease pathology there is hyperkeratosis and papillomatosis with decrease in thickness or disappearance of granular layer fungal stain frequently show melanesia yeast in stratum corneum some patient with uh, carp respond to topical imidazole or and other antifungal but half of the patient do not respond some patient respond to tetracycline and macrolide antibiotics suggesting a bacterial pathogen which is dietesia papillomatosis which is an actinomyces although this has not 100% proven the clinical features plaque of confluent and reticulate papillomatosis are mainly located on trunk especially the presternal interscapular and epigastric region so mainly the central areas 
they are pigmented. One to two mm diameter hyperkeratotic papules on the trunk. So main lesion or the primary lesion of this disease is a hyperkeratotic papule that is one to two millimeter. They coalesce to form grayish blue plaques, which are confluent at center but become reticular towards the periphery. Over weeks or months, plaques spread to involve the lower abdomen and the pubic areas. Localized forms affecting only face or pubic areas, mucous membranes are not involved. So here you can see discrete small papules that are coalescing to form confluent plaques and some reticulate pattern. Differential diagnosis include acanthosis nigricans. It may be considered as a part of acanthosis nigricans, macular amyloidosis, Darius disease, epidermal nevus, plain warts, petrisis versicolor, seboric keratosis, and retention of retention hyperkeratosis. CARP is a chronic disease with remissions and exacerbations. CRP respond to treatment, but it often relapses when treatment is withdrawn. Management is again weight reduction, just like in acanthosis nigricans. Some women with CARP improve during pregnancy or with use of oral contraceptives. First line treatment include the most effective appear to be minocycline. Topical miporosin ointment has been of benefit in some cases. Second line treatment include topical and systemic antifungals that include selenium sulfide shampoo, topical retinoids and vitamin D analogs with mixed results. And third line is both high and low dose isotretin isotretinoin have been used in the treatment. Pitriasis rotunda is the fourth disease we are going to discuss today. It is a dermatosis of unknown cause that presents as perfectly round, slightly erythematous, or mostly hyperpigmented plaques with fine scaling, usually located on trunk, buttocks, arms, and legs. The most common form of pitriasis rotunda is type 1, which is typically seen in older Asian or African individuals and associated with underlying systemic disease or malignancy. It resolved with the treatment of underlying condition. Type 2 is usually familial and present in young white patients. It is not associated with some underlying disease. Epidemiology. Type 1, pitriasis rotunda usually seen in patients in their 60s. Type 2 in patients in their 40s. PR has abnormal sex incidence. Most case reports of PR have come from South Africa in black population. The type 1 PR have been associated with hepatocellular carcinoma and pitriasis rotunda have been associated with number of systemic diseases that are listed below. So diseases that are associated with pitriasis rotunda include hepatocellular carcinoma, chronic myeloid leukemia, leukemia, squamous cell carcinoma of the heart palate, then granulomatous diseases like tuberculosis, liver sarcoidosis, uh, sorry, liver disease, cardiac disease, nutritional disease, pulmonary disease, chronic renal failure, ostitis, chronic diarrhea, and systemic sclerosis. So uh, three malignancies, tuberculosis, then liver cardiac, nutritional pulmonary disease, chronic renal failure, chronic diarrhea, and systemic sclerosis. Histologically, it shares some characteristics with ichthyosis vulgaris, and some author feel it's a variant of this disease that is a ichthyosis vulgaris. Histological changes are restricted to epidermis with uh, hyperkeratosis and loss of granular. Type 2 uh, PR is inherited as autosomal dominant trait. Clinical feature. Petrisis rotunda presents as asymptomatic, tiny, finely scaling plaques ranging from 0.5 to 20 centimeter in diameter located on the trunk, buttocks, arms, and legs. The plaque range in number from a few uh, to more than 100 and are sharply demarcated, forming polycyclic rings, plaques. There are, they are pink and slightly pigmented skin 
pink and slightly pigmented skin and dark brown in skin of phenotype 5 and 6 these are the plaques of petrisis rotunda differential diagnosis post inflammatory hyperpigmentation following fde erythema tinea corporis petrisis vesicular and psoriasis So investigation include the skin biopsy may be helpful to exclude other conditions such as uh, uh, it is not possible uh, exclude other conditions such as uh, as the diagnosis of petrisis rotunda is one of the exclusion. Skin scraping and mycological examination will exclude the dermatophytosis and petrisis versicolor. Among the management topical retinoids such as tretinoin, isotretinoin, or tazarotene. Second line treatment include topical 10% lactic acid, and third line include 5% salicylic acid ointment. So the fifth disease we are going to discuss today is keratosis pilaris. Keratosis pilaris is inherited abnormality of keratinization that affect the follicular orifices. with follicular plugging and perifollicular erythema and follicular atrophy so the main feature is formation of a follicular plug and later on it can result in inflammation which manifest as perifollicular erythema or flare and later on as follicular atrophy keratosis pilaris is very common as you must have come across it quite often and it affects 50 to 80% of adolescents kp often present in first decade of life and may worsen around puberty female appear to be more frequently affected than men kp is associated with thysis vulgaris and atopic axis so these are the two commonest associations among the other association of keratosis pilaris include obesity insulin dependent diabetes type 1 and type 2 nunan syndrome cardiofacio cutaneous syndrome prolidase deficiency down syndrome fair bank syndrome armstrong syndrome renal failure and hypervitaminosis a monilithrix Baconichia congenita, ectodermal dysplasia, systemic corticosteroids, lithium, or um, vimerifenib, or and sorafenib, both are BARF inhibitors and they also cause keratosis pilaris. A plug of excess keratin is formed, possibly due to defect in corneocyte addition. at the follicular orifice and this impedes the hair from emerging as well so not only the plug is um, blocking the follicular orifice but it is also blocking the hair emerging out so hairs can become ingrown and results in inflammatory response keratosis pilaris is inherited as autosomal dominant trait with variable penetrance and it shows seasonal variation and worsens in winter and improves in summer here is how in histopathology kp looks like there is hyperkeratosis hyperkeratosis hypergranulosis and follicular dilatation and a big keratin plug that is occupying the hair follicle kp start in children mostly on extensors of upper arm and get worse in around puberty there are small keratotic papules particularly on arms and thighs and giving a goose bump appearance and rough texture lesions can become pustular by rubbing on clo of clothing on buttock deeper inflammatory lesions lesions and nodules may develop this is how the follicular plugging of keratosis pilaris looks like giving a goose bump appearance there are certain clinical variants of 
keratosis pilaris. The first and the commonest is erythromelanosis follicularis fasciae et coli. A subtype of KP seen in India, Pakistan, and Middle East manifest as follicular hyperkeratosis accompanied by erythema and hyperpigmentation on the face, particularly cheek and neck. So as the name signifies, there is there is erythema as well as hyperpigmentation along with follicular hyperkeratosis. KP atrophicans. It is more inflammatory form of KP, which results in follicular fibrosis and atrophy, progressing to scarring alopecia. There are three variants of KP atrophicans. The first is KP atrophicans fasciae, also called as al erythema u frangines. U, u phryogenes. It affects cheek and lateral eyebrows. There is fixed erythema, follicular plugging, pitted scarring, and hair loss. This is an inher inherited as autosomal dominant trait. Then keratosis follicularis spinulosa decalvans. This disorder has onset in infancy and affects cheek and nose. The follicular plugging results in follicular atrophy. The scalp shows scarring alopecia and there is associated palmoplantar hyperkeratosis. Third type is atrophoderma vermiculata. This develops late in childhood, affect cheek and pre-auricular skin. Follicular plugging lead to reticulate atrophy of the skin, leading to vermiculate atrophoderma on the cheeks. Differential diagnosis of KP include Darius disease, uh, PRP. In Darius disease, there are dirty brown um, plaques are mainly involving the seborrheic areas, while KP occur mainly on extensor surfaces of arms and uh, legs and face. Atopic uh, PRP usually present as follicular lesions, but in addition to that, there is erythema and scaling, and there are islands of sparing. Atopic eczema usually present as um, erythematous and scaly lesions, on flexure surfaces, on face and neck. Lichen ridus present as skin colored and, uh, papules. If follicular lesions become inflamed, acne and folliculitis should also be considered. In majority of patients, KP is a mild cosmetic disorder with improved, which improves with age. Hyperpigmentation, hyperpigmentation and scarring can all occur. Management, KP is principally A cosmetic problem and it benefits from topical therapy is often limited. The keratolytics, particularly salicylic acid, lactic acid or glycolic acid are usually successful in treating but has to be continued for years. The second line therapy include topical retinoids in combination with 10% urea containing moisturizers. The third line treatment include oral isotretinoin but successful uh, but successful, successful use can result in later on relapses. Fourth line treatment, especially in patients with six erythe fixed erythema, is successfully treated with pulse dilation. Then the last topic which we are going to discuss today is lichen spinulosis. Lichen spinulosis is characterized by hyperkeratotic follicular papules that are arranged into large plaques. So the overall appearance is different from KP that in a way that it is arranged in a form of large plaque and the size of hyperkeratotic papule is a little bigger than keratosis pilaris. They appear suddenly and distribute symmetrically on the extensive surfaces of limbs and on the trunk and neck. Lesions are coarse to touch and typically measure two to five centimeter in diameter. 
like in spinalosis the disease of children and young adult with average age of onset 16.2 years equally distributed in male and female and there are case report of lichen spinulosa in hiv in crohn's disease in chronic alcoholism in hodgkin's disease in syphilis and with certain drugs like thallium gold and diphtheria toxin pathophysiology lichen spinulosa is a variant of keratosis pilaris and the conditions both conditions share the same features clinical features lichen spinulosa generally erupts acutely in crops and asymptomatic individual papules are follicular that are 2 to 3 mm and raised 1 mm above the surface with pointed keratotic spines papules coalesce into plaque rather than ranging from 2 to 5 cm there is symmetrical distribution on trunk buttock neck knees and elbow face hand and feet are spared differential diagnosis include keratosis pilaris like in nidus phironoderma and prp phironoderma is go we are going to discuss next time like in nidus and kp we have been we have discussed along with prp disease course and prognosis like in spinulosis can present persist for many years but most cases resolve spontaneously within 1 to 2 years the diagnosis of ls made clinically and can be supported by histology management include keratolytic agents like lactic acid salicylic 5 to 12% salicylic acid 3 to 5% and urea 10 to 20% then second line is topical retinoids and third line is topical ticalcitol so i thank you for uh, to, for today and this week so just wait for the part 2 which i'm going to deliver next week thank you and have a good day